Hey everyone, Lauren here. We're going to make an art journal page today. And I've just started by using an old book that I found at an op shop. And I'm just ripping out some of the pages. So when you hold the, page, the book up right, you can see there's different like sections of the books. They're called signatures. Now I go through and pull out a few pages out of each little section, each signature, so that it doesn't have a huge gap that ruin the spine. And that way it's a bit like fluid throughout the book. There's a couple of pages missing. This gives us room to create and thicken the pages up when, while we're art journaling. And then that's the point of doing that. So got out my jelly plate, but then put it away because instead I'm going to do it this way. You can see I've had a bit of a play with the jelly plate. I've got some goodies, some things up the top there that I've used as texture. I've got all my paint from the kit. And then I've got my little page to the side where I'm using to rub the extra paint off my brayer. So I'm just going to use the brayer, which is the rolling tool that I'm using, to put the paint on. I was going to just upside down put the paper onto that colour, which is why I spread it across my mat. But I decided that I didn't want just that look of paint. I wanted that look where it's been rolled onto the page because it does look different to when you just splat the paint on. So it's off to the side a little bit. I'll be able to show you in a moment. I'm just, because otherwise if I'd thought about it, I could have just put the paint to the side on my mat and then put it onto the paper while the book was flat on the table. But, you know, sometimes when you're just creating, your mind is not thinking about the logic and instead you're just doing, going with the flow. So just using some paper here to pull up some of that paint because you can see I've got a fair bit on the paper. And here's where I just stamp the pay the book down as well and instead I am going to use that so you can see how it doesn't fully go on and that would be the way to do it if you're using a jelly plate to just stamp your page like that now I'm just going to add the rest of the color with the brayer and clean up my mess I'm not going to show you the whole time of cleaning up the mess because it took a while so got some paper between the other one that the first page that I made and then this is that second one that we made with all that color so I'm just using a baby wipe to spread out the color and this is going to be my base you can see and also to pull up some of the color so I can see the text underneath because I wanted the whole point of using a book is to sometimes use it. the other reason of using a book to make an art journal is one second I couldn't find my art journal does anyone know where I put it um, and the third one is so that you can have that little concise book and sus be sustainable and use something rather than buy something new. So I've just got this little jelly print that I already created. These are in some videos as my exclusive in the um, subscriber Facebook page. So if you are a subscriber, go and get They are some extra goodness that you get from us, some extra inspiration some tips some tricks and anything else that you want and then I'm going to use that so I've just ripped down the pages the edges just so that it's a bit rough and added it onto the paper pulling out my jelly plate and we're going to have a little play so that I can add some extra to the background wasn't liking how it was just plain blue so just clean it up because it was a bit messy so I'm going to use some of the, the blush pink and then also some of the um, mango, I believe. So just rubbing this out. You can see I don't have very much at all. Just a little bit of paint goes along. And the better, the less you have on there and the more sticky it is, the more tacky, I guess, the better the print is rather than it just, you can, otherwise you may as well not use the jelly plate. So I've just put over some netting and I'm just using some smaller, some other items from my household, a toilet roll that I'm squishing to make an oval shape. I've got a cookie cutter there and I'm just rolling down the netting to give that net, that um, background texture. And then I'm using the cookie cutter to make, I'm twisting it a little so it makes an extra bigger um, border to the shape. So the more you do it, the bigger you get like that one that was in the bottom. And then the smaller you do it, you just have a sort of more extra um, def definition. So I'm going just stamping that onto the paper. And then I'm going to use some of this mango, adding some gesso just so that I can have some white to it. You can use white acrylic paint, but I just had gesso. 
handy so that's what I used and I'm just using my brayer to spread it out to get the color that I'm looking for and so this has got a bit more paint on it than last time so it's going to give a, a broader a brighter print and then I'm just using that cookie cutter in a few different um, ways so whether it's bigger um, edges or smaller and then I can turn it over it's one from Tupperware for scones and something else so it's got one bigger side and then you turn it flip it over and it's got a smaller circle which is quite handy when I was doing this so you can see here just put some a couple of those prints I double stamped it onto there and then use some extra paper just to get up the last paint just going to clean it before I do a little bit more and this time am I going to do some more or am I just cleaning it I'm just reminding you to make sure you clean your roller even though you can just roll it onto the paper and get a fair bit of paint off when you finish it's good to roll the color off it and a good way to do that is a baby wipe or some soapy water so I'm going to go in here with some a black paint some black gesso actually and I'm just using a lid to do some black circles and water around the fun of art journaling is to just make layers and different things going on so it's the more layers you put on the more depth it looks and more um, 3d-ness I guess to it but it's not then just a flat dimensional artwork so just putting that on used a different couple of lids so that there was different sizes again I should move paper that's to the right because underneath it is my Tim Holtz Ranger messy mat which I just got as a Christmas present which would have been handy to use in a right the right way I do use it in some of my videos that I was filming but apparently not this one so you can see here how the backgrounds going just giving a little bit of a dry I've still got that page to the side there that jelly print that's got that it's got I put a black layer of paint and then I put some blue over the brick stencil and then I use a mask to um, outline this girl which wasn't fully um, visible which is why I'm using my black paint pen to just add some of the outline and that way it just stands out a bit more from the background rather than a, just a blob and I am going to then just rip the pages a little bit rip the edges a little bit more just to be a bit more um, I guess defined around the shape and I'm just going to use my glue stick to glue her on so that she is um, fully stuck and that's just going to go she is going to overlap the middle just a little so I crease that first and then glue down the edges rather than the opposite way that way when it folds when I fold the book she's not going to bubble up or break or anything now to bring that picture you can see that picture looks like I just stuck it on top and it's got no connection to the background at all so this is where my next part of my art journaling is so I'm using a paint pen here which I had to prime because I've never used before in that same color tone as the mango acrylic paint that we got in the kit and I'm just adding some little dots some little dashes over the paper um, and then over the background and then a few different spots and then I'm just going to flick it to add some ink splatters and then that's going to be that for that color for now and then I go and grab some of the light blue that I've got in a Posca paint pen as well and again over the image and then over the background so it ties it back in and then in a few different spots so that it's not just a random thing because sometimes when you just put an element on a layout or an art journal if you just put it in one section it can stand out but if you put it in a few different places it kind of becomes very cohesive so again with the ink splatters now that's just bringing the color and the patterning and the layering into the forefront as well so that it covers the back that it brings it in to bring it as part of the layers rather than something that's plonked on top now I have this lovely piece of vellum that's from Kayser craft that is got printed scripty text on it and I use my jelly plate to put some color over top of it and I just ripping it down and adding some to this background just to add some more to what's going on rather than it just being one layered glued piece on top of that painted background so that way it's more collagey and more going on 
So I've added some over that into image on both sides. So each of those pieces um, overlap the image a little bit or a lot. And then I've put that third piece over to the left um, coming off the edge of the art journal page. Now I'm just going to make those circles that have were covered by those pages, those collage pieces, full so that again that will bring those, make it look like I've stamped over top and as well as underneath so that it brings it all together. Sorry, I'm repeating myself about the, the layering and, and making it. Something that is really, I think, important when I art journal because it makes it um, one thing rather than a background and a foreground. It's just one layout. <laughs> so just drying the paint pen because I've been caught out many times with not drawing, um, drawing color. Ah, oh, my goodness, words. Not drying my paint pen and then it running or um, ruining pens and things on top of it. So just giving it a good dry. Apparently I needed lots of time to keep that in the video to tell you that. I don't know why I didn't edit that out. Isn't oh, anyone else that films videos, isn't it quite funny or quite annoying? It's probably not funny when you're watching and then you voice up, like you edit and you're like, great, it's all great. And then you voice over and you're like, ah, oh, why did I not cut that part down? That's so much. Anyway, so pulling out, I was going to pull out my stencil by the look of it and my jelly plate, but instead I found this print that's got some of that brick stencil work from left over from that, um, the girl page, the mask where the girl is, the focal image. And I'm just going to add that there. It's sort of directly above each other like a vertical line, but they don't meet. So there's got that section in between. So again, with the Posca paint pens, just adding a bit more um, goodness to it. I'm just going to um, write on there a quote. But just wait a second because I don't want to say something in case it's the wrong thing. So yeah, that's what I was thinking happened. So I actually use my baby wipe and rub those colors in because I didn't like the way the writing happened. And instead I added that and then used my baby wipe to add some of that color to the other side. Just adding more paint pen to make the, that color a bit bolder than what was on there. And again, using my baby wipe to just spread it out and clear it out to the kind of level that I want. I just really didn't like the way, one, the way I wrote and then two, the way it was sitting like that. So instead I did pull out this stencil, this mask that is um, letters and I didn't use it originally when I did my jelly plate, but I'm going to use it as inspiration to cut out some letters from the jelly printing. So I pull out another page of um, one, another print and I'm just going to roughly cut them in the same size and then cut the letters out. You can definitely be more precise and draw the letters first or use a stamp or like I had the mask which inspired me you could always use the mask to outline and cut them out. So I'm going to spell the word hello because I am original. That's just how well my brain was working. Not at all. <laughs> anyway so I'm going to outline them with a, the blue Posca pen Oh, and it's not actually a Posca pen, it's one from Big W, but this one is. But I really don't like how it just looks so perfect on the background. The background is quite layered, it's quite grungy, it's got some messiness going on, but it looks cohesive. And these just looked too, like, precise. So then I go around with some orange because I want to bring in some of that orange as well. And I, I like it, but it's not for this layout. It's just not for this art journal page. It's not the right thing. So I'm going to finish them all off and just, you know, ponder it and make a decision about it. But instead, I'm going to use a baby wipe and pull off some of that color, blend in some of that color. And that's going to be how I use the letters. So that way it gives that definition. Because the, the reason I was bordering them with the paint pen is to make them stand out and have some shape of the letter because they're going to blend into the background a little but I didn't want them the way it turned out so it was nice that I could just you know baby wipes are your friend 
anyway so it's nice to just wipe them out a little and have that happen so that you still have the bit of the color it ties in with the background but there is still the letters going on so I'm just using my glue stick to glue them on and you can see there they do stand out but not as well as you'd hope a title or, and some writing would which I guess with an art journal it's not always the case you don't always want them to stand out but in this situation I did so I'm just going to use my black paint pen to add a shadow border so back in the 80s and 90s when I was a teenager and a, you know the end of primary where we got to do all those stencil books and all those bubble writing and have a now because I know how to do shadow lettering <laughs> oh my gosh it's so funny like anyway so I then realized that it would be great to do an inside border on that white border on the girl so I'm using that black pen to add the border that way and I really like how that's turned out so here's some close-ups and hopefully you enjoy this video and inspired to get creative catch you next time guys